Dear Arthur friends, first of all, I want to thank you for the incredible engagement on the last post. I really enjoyed reading your comments, suggestions, and different approaches to the case. It's always inspired to see how many ways we can look at the same clinical challenge. And that's exactly the purpose of this series, to learn together, sharing ideas and refining our biomechanical reasoning as a community. Today, I will walk you through the solution I adopted for this adult patient with an unilateral class 2, lack of space of the 12 and a significant midline deviation. But let me be very clear, this is not the only possible solution and it's probably not the best for every clinician in every scenario. It's a strategy that works in this specific case and I believe it can be a great opportunity for us to explore diagnostic thinking for systems and clinical decision making through a biomechanical lens. And if you are enjoying this kind of discussion, I invite you to visit the Essential Biomechanics Academy, the most complete ecosystem to learn biomechanics in a clear, structured and clinically focused way. You can explore several free space, join the conversation and discover all the benefits the community offers to help you grow with confidence in this core area of orthodontics. So let's dive into the case. I will show you a logic step by step so we can train our clinical thinking together. Let's discuss this interesting clinical case about an adult class 2 unilateral right side. Her chief complaint was crooked upper teeth and impaired chewing. Another significant clinical detail was this significant midline deviation to the left side. The main question for this post was how would you get space here? It seemed a very simple case. A mild local lack of space for the upper lateral incisor. But in fact, there are a lot of details to be considered here in this case. Let's take a look. Our main goals here were to obtain the space for the right lateral incisors. We also want to correct the upper dental midline. So moving it to the left, so we can have a better aesthetic. We also want, if possible, to establish better lateral guidance for a better chewing. We want to ensure a good aesthetic alignment of the entire dentition. Let's analyze one by one the main options that you have posted on the comments. The main suggestion was to extract the upper first premolar. Let's analyze this option. Most colleagues opt for this simple solution to extract this upper first premolar. So we will have a lot of space to make the distalization of the upper canine. And obviously this will correct the midline. This is a possible solution for this case. It's possible to correct the midline, the crowding, and by distalizing the canine, we can obtain a better lateral guidance with the canines. But if we extract the premolar, we will finish in a class 2. This is not a problem according to most of the studies. But let me raise my main concern about this option. And that's why, in my opinion, this is not the best solution for this case. Let's take a look. The patient didn't have the canine as you can see in this occlusal view and also in this draw. This canine was extracted when the patient was a child. A very common clinical solution in general clinics when the patient doesn't have the possibility to make an orthodontic treatment. But my main concern with the extraction of the upper premolar is that we will reduce the number of teeth. We will have a narrow, a narrow upper arch. We will reduce the arch perimeter. And this is not a nice solution for this case 
in my opinion, that the patient already have a reduced number of teeth. Therefore, although possible, I really prefer to avoid this approach. Let's discuss the second option suggested by our colleagues. They suggested the entire distalization of the posterior right segment anchored by TEDs. We will not extract, we will just distalize all this posterior segment. Of course, that we first have to derotate both upper molars, so we have a better mechanics for distalization. We can use both intra or extra alveolar TEDs for this purpose. It's a possible solution to solve this case. By the distalization, it's also possible to correct the midline and to increase the aesthetic of the patient. It's a possible solution. But please pay attention to the enormous quantity of distalization that is required in this case. It means that if you use an intra-alveolar TED, probably we will have to change the position of this TED after some time. And this can delay the treatment duration. It's important to point out that I have treated this case before the popularization of the extra alveolar TEDs. So this was not the solution that I have adopted for this case. Let me show you how I have treated this case. I will choose the green color here to mark the option that I have chosen for this case. I have made expansion combined with and unilateral distalization. Let me show you. I will first remove these blue arrows. First of all, I will derotate both molars, and this will be very important to get good space, mesial, to these molars. This space, together with some expansion that is needed in this case, will be more than enough to get space for this lateral incisor. And then I will proceed an unilateral distalization that will solve the midline and we will also correct the class 2 and we will have good lateral guidance after this. So let's jump into my approach. I will show you some slides so you can see the results and the main mechanical tips for this case. Here you can see the first slide. The clinical challenge was the question how to get space for this lateral incisor. I have already posted this case in my story. So I will go directly to the main clinical tips. Here you can see the initial photos, the x-rays, and let's go first to the priority number one. First of all, we need space to put the lateral into the archway. Here we have a mirror image, I'm sorry. But the main purpose here is very clear. You have to derotate both up so you get good space for including the lateral incisors into the archway. The way I have performed the alignment of this lateral incisor was by using an overlay. Here you can see the main archway, stainless steel, Rectangular one, 16 by 22, because in this case I was working with, with slots 0 0.18. And here, a night tie, 0 0.16, to get a nice alignment. After this round wire, I have used a night tie rectangular wire, 17 by 25. And pay attention that I have inverted the bracket so we can get a better torque control in order to avoid an excessive, an excessive uncontrolled tipping for this tooth. This was the priority number two, to get a nice alignment and leveling. And finally, the unilateral distalization, we have several ways to achieve this. I really like to work with the Ricketts Z-Arch. It's a segmental mechanics. We have some pre-activation bands in this Z-arch that I hope to show you in next videos. 
And in my opinion, this is one of the most powerful ways to achieve segmental distalization. As you can see in the pictures, we got a full class two correction, an excellent correction of the midline, good intercuspation, good lateral guides, anterior guides, beautiful arch wire shapes, good function, good aesthetics. Here we can see the comparisons with different photos. To sum up, I think we got a very nice result for this case. I hope you have enjoyed this clinical discussion. And remember, the Essential Biomechanics Academy is open for you to explore and connect. Moreover, if you have a complex case and would like my input to the biomechanical planning, send me a DM on Instagram. May biomechanics always be with you.